Hey everyone, Brian here with DIY Outdoor Life. Today we're gonna to get to take a look at the Base Charge 1500. This is a brand new power station from a company that's been around for a long time. There's things about it that I love. There's things about it that some people might wanna avoid. I'm excited to talk about it today. Let's get to it. Now for starters, I usually go right into the features, the specifications, and how my testing stacked up against the advertised claims. With this power station, I think it's worth noting that it's being made by BioLite. It's a new skew to them, but BioLite has been around for a long time. They've made a ton of the highest quality outdoor products that many of us own. So we know we're gonna get a good owner's manual, tech support, and a warranty that's actually worth something. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry is making a power station these days. It's nice to know that you have a reputable company that's going to be there for you. Of course, you're going to pay for that. It's not going to cost the same as the no-name Amazon special unit, but I have a lot more faith in the quality of what's going into this. Now, a quick note about BioLite that a lot of people don't know is that they actually cut their teeth producing products in Africa. They have a huge program in Kenya where they're making lighting, cooking, and energy solutions in places where that makes the difference between life and death. So that's a little bit different of a research and development than a lot of the power stations I'm seeing on the market. I'm excited to see whether or not it makes a difference. So for appearance and build quality, I think they did an excellent job. This is a really good looking unit and it's a lot more sealed up than a lot of the units that I see on the market. Now they have these cupped in handles so that there's no handle coming over the top or nothing sticking out the side. They actually use these cupped handles to cut the slot for the ventilation on the system. And I really like what they're doing as far as the build quality. There's some good ABS plastic here. It feels rugged. It's shorter to the ground with a low center of gravity. So you can put it in the back of your car or truck and it's not gonna bounce all around. Uh, I'm gonna tip my coffee over before I knock this system over. So, so far, so good. I'll put the exact size and weight of the unit on the screen. I have a 1500 watt hour unit. They also make a smaller brother version that's 600 watt hours with similar performance, but everything is stepped down from the battery size to the inverter capability. One thing that I'll notice just from a practical standpoint is this system for 1500 watt hours is considerably lighter than a lot of the systems on the market. Now I've been able to move this thing around. I've been really surprised with how much capacity they were able to give you for the weight. Now the size and weight of this unit is gonna be made possible. Here's my uh, coffee mug next to it. By the type of battery that they're using in this system, they're using a ternary lithium battery, an NMC lithium battery. This is the lightest, most portable type of battery. It's what we use in our cell phones, laptops, and even some electric vehicles. Now, this is a battery that I really like, but I'm gonna have to give a little explanation here because this is one of the areas that people are gonna jump on. There's so much misinformation about NMC batteries and portable power stations. So let's try to go over that as quickly as possible and then we'll show you the charging and discharging features on this unit. Hi. A lithium NMC battery weighs a lot less and it can be made in more portable shapes. That's why we use it for portable electronic devices. Now, its sister technology, the lithium iron phosphate technology, is a far superior technology for durability in certain applications. Now, you're gonna hear that applied to power stations a lot, but I've been using these a long time and I can tell you that there's a lot more misconception there than there is truth. The NMC battery is gonna do the same thing that the lithium iron phosphate battery is gonna do for about 30% less weight. It makes a big difference. It's like the difference between a laptop and a desktop computer. So for the way that most people are gonna use these power stations uh, for home energy backup, for camping, for little portable power applications, I feel like the NMC battery is far superior. Now the lithium iron phosphate battery is gonna weigh more, but it's gonna be a lot more durable. 
So if you were running your whole cabin off of this and charging it with solar and using up the whole battery every day, I would tell you to find a system with lithium iron phosphate. But if the portability and, and your ability to stack and move this around a campsite or your home when the power goes out, both the systems are gonna last just as long. It's consumable electronics. So they're gonna die on the calendar like your cell phone or your computer at home is. Something else on the unit is gonna break long before the battery goes bad. So I continue to explain this to people based on my years of experience using lithium NMC for off-grid construction. They're different, but one is not superior. So don't fall into the camp of the people with the LifePo tattoo on their chest that say, I would only buy a system with that LifePo. There really is some pros and cons to both. But now let's get into some of these features. So this system comes with a 1200 watt pure sine wave inverter. Almost all power stations have pure sine wave inverters now. It means you can run a smart TV or any of your sensitive electronics without worry. 1200 watt is a continuous capability. It can handle higher surges than that. 1200 watts is kind of pared down for a unit of this size, but you're gonna be able to run coffee makers, toaster ovens, uh, microwaves, uh, hot water tea kettle on it, but you're gonna run into issues with a 1200 watt limit when you get into some like power tools or even the high settings on like a hair dryer. So it should give you a good idea of what you're able to run on this unit. Now I ran the efficiency numbers and this stuff is getting boring for me. They're all performing about the same. So you got mid 80% efficiency, which is uh, industry standard for what this unit is trying to do. Now across the top, you have four USB outputs. You have two fast charge USB A's and you have two five volt, three amp, so about 15 watt USB-C outputs. But what this unit has that I really like over here on this side is a 100 watt power delivery port that's bi-directional. What that means is you can deliver a very fast charge to a laptop, computer, a tablet, anything that can handle USB-C quick charging. And because it's bi-directional, you can charge this unit through that USB-C. So if you don't have your charger laying around, you can use a laptop charger to get 100 watts into this unit. That's a pretty cool feature. I use it with solar panels, and because it's a separate pathway to the battery, we talked about this, you can charge through the USB power delivery port and your solar or wall charger at the same time, a pretty nice feature. Over here on the DC 12 volt side, you have a regulated cigarette port. You push the button to turn it on. This system's delivering 13.4 volts, regulated. So whether the battery is full or the battery is at the low site of charge, you're still getting that high voltage. That consistency is excellent for things like refrigerators, but when you put higher loads on there, the fact that it's starting at a higher voltage gives you more threshold for that voltage to drop. Voltage drops when you're drawing high currents through resistance. So when they give you that regulated high voltage, it's a really, really good feature on these power stations. Most everyone is doing that today. Now I got the same numbers out of the DC that I got out of the AC as far as efficiency. Everything is industry standard here. They're not setting the world on fire, but they're not coming in second place to anybody. So pretty good features on the AC, USB, and DC side. You have some 5521 barrel inputs if you like to tinker around with 12 volt lights or water pumps on your camper or van build. So everything here so far is pretty standard. Let's talk about charging. Now this unit can be charged four ways. We talked about the bi-directional USB uh, power delivery port, but everything else is gonna go through this Anderson power pole. They give you a 120 watt wall charger that goes in through the Anderson power pole, but it's also an MPPT where you can plug your solar panels in. There is a 400 watt limit and it's a 30 volt limit. So you're not gonna string your panels up to high voltage in series. This is a pretty basic middle of the road solar charger. With the MPPT tracking, being able to put four solar panels, four 100 watt solar panels is a good feature, but nowadays it's kind of lackluster. So what my recommendation would be is to think about what you need. 
if this is truly meant to be a portable system, are you going to be bringing more than 400 watts of solar panels with you? If you're not, well then this is gonna match your capabilities. If you're looking for a 1200 watt solar array wired in high voltage, well, this isn't gonna do it for you. So everything that we're seeing here that BioLite was doing is kind of going right down the middle of the road. Very high quality, reliable products, but they're not setting the world on fire with any intense features on this thing. BioLite is giving you a wireless charger on the top of this unit. Um, that's convenient for a lot of people. I like the fact that you don't have to turn it on. There is no master on and off switch on this unit. It just kind of goes to sleep on its own. And when you turn one of the AC or DC functions on the unit, the unit turns on. The wireless charging turns on automatically. It detects your phone when you put it on and it gives you that wireless charging that a lot of people like. Now, for me, I always find these things finicky. It doesn't matter who's making them. It might be the case I'm using on my phone. It works. I've been using it for the whole time I've been testing. Uh, it's charging now, but I always find like I go to sleep and wake up and the phone moved enough that it's not charging. That's my personal gripe with wireless chargers. I think a lot of people will like the fact that BioLite is doing this. And because it's actually detecting your phone and turning on the charger, it has very, very low resting consumption. It's not wasting energy or power uh, when the device is not being used. So that's pretty handy and I know a lot of people will like that. The last feature on this device that is normally something that I just gloss over. I mean, these communication screens are about the same on all of these units. BioLite is doing something different here. They have gone out of their way to try to make a very, very user-friendly power station. I think they're understanding that the lion's share of the market still is very confused by volts, amps, watts, resistance, and they're trying to alleviate some of that concern. Like all power stations, they tell you the state of charge, how many watts are going in through any type of charging, any of the four ways, how many watts are going out, depending on what you're using. But they've gone out of their way to give you an energy odometer that can be reset like the odometer in your car. So you can learn about how many watts you use at a particular period of time, on a camping trip, during a power outage. That feature is going to teach you a lot about when your power goes out, what particular devices are drawing uh, you know, different levels of consumption. Without going too far into this, this is really good for devices that have intermittent power draw. So your refrigerator might draw five or 600 watts, and you could see that on any power station, but it shuts off when the compressor's not running. So this will allow you to tell how much wattage that fridge is using over five hours, 10 hours, 15 hours. This is gonna be a super educational feature for a lot of people. Now, in addition to that, they make their message center a lot more intuitive. If you make a mistake on the system, instead of just like a little indicator light, like a dashboard light, the message center is actually going to tell you what the problem was to teach you about that. So this section, normally something I gloss over, is actually gonna be the most important part of how I weigh the pros and cons on this system and wrap this up seeing if this is the right buy for you or not. So there's a lot to love about the Base Charge 1500, but who I recommend it for, we're gonna have to thread the needle a little bit on this one. I love the build quality. I love the design. It's set up like, you know, somebody who uses a power station a lot. I like the flat top with the wireless charger. I like that they're non-proprietary on their input meaning they use this Anderson power pole that can be adapted to anything. I really don't like it when they use that special plug that you can only use that company's solar panel. This plug can be used or adapted to anything. I use a variable voltage charger. I should talk about that in another video, but it allows me to max out the shore power charge so I don't even have to use a 120 watt block charger. I can put 400 watts into that system and it's cheaper than upgrading to a, a store bought you know, a power supply. So I do like that feature. Everything on here is pretty good. 
I think the difference is gonna come on this interface. If you were a beginner, if I was gonna spend my hard earned money buying this power station for someone else, there's a lot of people that I know could learn through this interface and have better results using a system like this versus one that just tells you what's in and what's out and doesn't really educate beginners on what's going on here. So I think that's the key. Now, what are the downsides to this unit? Well, some people are gonna not like the NMC battery. I talked about it, I think that's a toss up, but it really, for me, comes down to the price versus what you're getting. Right now, they're charging $1,700 for a 1,500 watt hour system. A lot of the systems on the market land about a dollar a watt hour. So they're asking for 200 more dollars here. Usually when you see that, I want to see some features, the Bluetooth control, the serial, uh, the series connections for the solar, maybe some built-in charger with uh, super fast capabilities. You're not really getting that. So for the extra money, you're getting a really solid, reputable brand name, and you're getting an interface that's going to work a lot better for beginners. So that's who I recommend it to. If you have somebody that uh, is worried about power outages and you know that they have no clue what's going on with electric, this is gonna be the system for them. If you're a beginner getting into this market, this is gonna be a good starting point. But if you have some experience or you're looking for a system with some particular feature that's very high end as far as speed, well, this will probably be a system that you can pass on. So that's my real world review. I do love the system. I hope that all makes sense. Thank you so much for the people who are joining the channel membership and uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you next time.